Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. I have sinned against you, my Lord. God will not allow his servant who fell into sin to remain in his sin. All this self-appointed defense system for scandalous preachers. You are cooking yourself for hell. The Bible cannot be beneath your papa. When the seraphim angels remove the fifty garment from your papa, your papa will no longer be scandalous. Your papa will come out publicly and admit his sins because they are now public. Go and read the life and times of Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker. Jim Baker said he cried afterwards. You write in your book that it was not an affair, that it was 15 minutes. That's right. Jimmy Swaggart came out publicly. Jim Baker came out publicly and spoke and admitted. I told Jerry Falwell that there was a sexual encounter. And I know he did because I was standing right next to him when he was with Jerry. The videos are there online. How Jimmy Swaggart publicly cried and said, I've sinned against God. Please forgive me. I have sinned against you, my Lord. It is from these stories I learned that God does not allow his servant to be taken away by scandals. And I would ask that your precious blood. The day the physical man is taken away from you as a preacher, you will publicly come to admit Confess and repent. Would wash and cleanse. When you now see a servant of God, whose scandals have become public, and the person is not admitting, he does not belong to God. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, scan falling in sin. He fell, filthy garments in the realm of the spirit is a lifestyle of sin. Or you fell into sin as a preacher, you enter into, you just fell into sin as a preacher. So your garment is stained. Look at what the Lord does if he really calls you. The Bible says, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. And he answered, that is the Lord, he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garment on him. God will not allow his servant who fell into sin to remain in his sin. Never. When you see a servant of God moving from scandal to scandal, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, is moving like that steadily, he's either not call of God or he was not process of God when he was called of God because we are called then we are tested or processed then approved before appointed anyone who is called who is not processed who is not approved before appointed will be a back of scandal or anyone who is not called of God at all there are agents of the devil on the pulpit today mostly operating as prophets and apostles who are operating prophesying by Baal. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, they commit adultery, they prophesy by Baal, and they make God's people to err. Do you think all these scandalous prophets and apostles we have on ground, their members are going to go to heaven? Watch out. Watch out. Every elect, elect among them, God will take the elect away, out of them, out of those churches. They cannot make heaven. Because the influence of their purpose is too strong in their lives than the influence of Jesus. And because the influence of their purpose is stronger than the influence of Jesus, they cannot make heaven. So if you're under a scandalous papa, run for your life. Stop arguing and defending nonsense. Run for your life. Don't be stupid. Your soul is too precious to Jesus. He will answer for his own sin. She will answer for her own sin. Stop defending what should not be defended. All this self-appointed defense system for scandalous preachers. 
you are cooking yourself for hell. You have not even met the Lord. Because if you have met the Lord, you will not, you will not conceal evil. The Bible says, do not have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Expose them. That's what the Bible says. The Bible cannot be beneath your papa. No. The Bible cannot be beneath your papa. Watch this. Listen. If your papa was actually of God, God would have commanded the seraphim angels in his throne room to remove the filthy garment from your papa. When the seraphim angels remove the filthy garment from your papa, your papa will no longer be scandalous. You will no longer hear again that your papa have done that. Your papa will come out publicly and admit his sins because they are now public. If the sins were, look at the way God operate. When our sins, we preachers, are still private, God will order his purifying angels to remove the filthy garment from us. Then we will confess those sins privately. And what and the sins will remain buried by God because we have now turned away from them who are now living righteous. So there will be no publicity of the sins. But if God rebuke us in secret using people around and we shut them down, the sins will one day become public. When the sins become public and out of God's mercy, he still come and say, take away the filthy garment from him. The day the filthy garment is taken away from you as a preacher, you will publicly come to admit confess and repent I know preachers who have done that in America go and read the life and times of Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker in the 80s they had scandals that became public I tell you so each time I think of these two men of God I say to myself God you are you are fearful you are fearful listen carefully every preacher who spoke against those two ignorantly now listen it's not like what we are doing today urging the body of christ to wake up from slumber and stop defending the defendless but those preachers what they did then was not what we are doing now it was a different thing entirely they like came out in pride and arrogance i have their messages and that in their pride they said a lot of things. Look at what I realized. Jimmy Swaggart came out publicly. Jim Baker came out publicly and spoke and admitted. I still have the... You see, I remember one time, the videos are there online. How Jimmy Swaggart publicly cried and said, I've sinned against God. Please forgive me. Good evening. TV evangelist Jimmy Swaggart is leaving his fate to the Lord and church leaders tonight after confessing that he sinned. Tears filled his eyes as Swaggart took the pulpit in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this morning to beg forgiveness. Channel 5's Tim Herrera reports tonight, Swaggart is stepping down from his powerful TV ministry while the Assembly of God Church investigates him for having an affair with a prostitute. Jimmy Swaggart's the top-rated preacher on TV. He leads a multi-million dollar evangelical empire. One of the now he's confessed so to a moral mistake and he's pulling away from the pulpit for a while. I have sinned against you, my Lord. And I would ask that your precious blood would wash and cleanse every stain until it is in the seas of God's forgetfulness. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. When they cried, Doda preachers stupidly did not know that as Jimmy Swaggart came up publicly and cried and Jim Baker came up publicly and cried God forgive
gave them and wiped away the slate completely because the filthy garment was removed from them. The preachers kept speaking ill of Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker after God had removed the filthy garments from them. As we speak today, Jimmy Swaggart, Jim Baker, they are still alive. Their ministries are still flowing. But those preachers, many of them are dead and their ministries are shut down. It is from these stories I learned that God does not allow his servant to be taken away by scandals. If whatever they did become public, God will speak, remove the filthy garment from them. And the servants will publicly admit whatever they have done. And ministry continues. When you now see a servant of God, whose scandals have become public, and the person is not admitting, he does not belong to God. The person is grandstanding from generation to generation. They don't belong to God. Because if you belong in Jesus, say, these ones that the Father has given me, I would likewise not cast away. He said, no one will take them out of my hands. Judas never belonged to God. He never repented. He got to a point that he regretted. That's how he ended up in suicide. Regret and remorse are different from repentance. But some of these guys, there's no even remorse.